hey, it's Chuck. And what I want to show you is I want to show you this still shot. Now, you see this still shot. You see the gentleman in the white shirt in the black shorts. Now, the, the one with his head on the rim there, he has just gone between the legs and then dunked it. Now, I'm going to show you full speed. Okay, here he goes. Between the legs, boom! Now, what if I was to tell you that was Devin Sanchez? Unbelievable, man. This kid's unbelievable. I can't even get enough of him. Let's get it. And I don't think he's going to throw the ball as much as he thinks he's going to throw the ball. Now that Chip Kelly's on board. And I'm happy about that. More quarterback. Um... The truth is Ryan Day has made a change philosophically, but it's none of those. You all know who wins. LSU is the drunkest fan base in the country. To start, that means we've got hey, it's Chuck, and thanks so much for joining me on a Monday morning. It's it's very it's about midnight Sunday night for me. You'll see this Monday morning. But uh, I have spent most of the day just trying to get as much information as I can about what went on in these official visits, talked to some people, read everything we could get our hands on. And I think we got a couple of nuggets to go over, at least enough to put together a little 15 minute show or something. But uh, we got some new audience members uh, over the last couple of weeks. So welcome guys. Appreciate you joining me. We drop about three to five episodes a week, uh, 8 a.m. And we do a, always do a big weekend show because I got tired of not having any weekend content for myself. So I do it now and give it to you so you can have a uh, juck on bucks in the background while you do your Sunday chores. Now, I'm sure by now everybody's heard that offensive lineman Jake Cook has made his announcement. He took his official visit and he has announced that uh, he is going to be a Buckeye. I've been talking to Jake throughout this entire process from his first big camp at Under Armour where he won the MVP and everybody was buzzing on around him. Uh, through the Rivals camp where he won another MVP, through his first big workout at the Woody where he didn't get an offer but was still in very positive spirits after a long talk with Ryan Day and Justin Fry afterwards where he watched a couple hours of film with Coach Fry. And then his second workout where he came down with his team and worked out with Fry at center. Um, didn't get his offer after that one either. Was incredibly dejected and was ready to kind of throw in the towel. And that's when he tweeted his peer recruitment post and uh, kind of reaffirmed his commitment to Louisville um, all the way up to last Saturday when he finally got his offer and did something that we want everybody to do in that situation. And that is not hanging up the phone without saying yes, which he did on the spot. He didn't announce it till this weekend, but I think it's awesome that he did that because you know, that's what we want to see. Uh, you know, that's something that we did not see with another guy that we really, uh, we really like around here at Chuck on Bucks, and that's Andrew Stargell. Andrew Stargell got his offer, came up for his official, and still ended up going down to see NC State on his official there. And he had Kentucky, and uh, that was last weekend. He didn't go. He canceled that visit, which kind of makes you wonder. But I know a lot of people were thinking, was this a Cook or Stargell situation? I've talked to Andrew plenty. Andrew thinks he's in good standing with Ohio State, and they're going to accept his commitment should he make that commitment. So he makes his decision on July 3rd. At least he announces on July 3rd. Um, is he already in the class? Is he going to be in the class on July 3rd? I don't know. But, I mean, unless somebody's lying, they're planning on taking both. And I think I do still think Stargell commits on July 3rd, and he's going to end up in this class. Like I said, I could be wrong, but if I'm wrong, somebody's lying. I don't know. Wouldn't be the first time. So let's go over who else is in the class. Um, Bo Pin Miller. Uh, Bob Pin Miller. He goes by BP. So we're just going to call him BP for now. And BP. Diamonds in the rough, particularly when they're from Ohio. And Bob Pin Miller is such a guy. Bob Pin Miller, a dude from uh, Ontario High School. Is it Ontario High School? Yeah. Ontario High School in Mansfield. Came to camp a little while ago. Three-star guy. He's certainly impressed. He's a big, long kid. Uh, absolute blazer. And he plays quarterback for his high school. He's been messing around at wide receiver for about four months now. And this is Bodpin. 4-4, four, four, 440 guy. Look at this kid. 
Now, there was a thought Brian Hartline was so intrigued by him last week at camp that he was going to offer it. Well, Bodpin came today with his team, and he got that offer. And Bodpin is going to be a Buckeye. So Bodpin is a Buckeye. Jake Cook is a Buckeye. Who's next? Brody Lennon. Brody Lennon is a, a 6'4", verified 6'4", 220-pound tight end from uh, Gilmore Academy in Gates Mills. Um, very fancy, extremely fancy. And he played really lousy competition in high school. The dude's legit. We watched his film here. It, legit speed, good hands, nasty on defense. He's a football player for sure. And he's been on the board since, let's see, when uh, it was close to the very end of sealing up Nate Roberts' commitment. We went over three tight ends, Luca Gilbert, Brock Schott, and Brody Lennon. So he's been on the radar for a while. and. Uh, Luca Gilbert and Brock Schott committed in like th within three days of each other, both to Miami. So they were off the board, and it didn't look like Keenan Bailey was going to go after Brody Lennon at that point because so much time had elapsed. But he ended up going after him, got him into camp, offered him, and Brody Lennon was on his official visit this weekend. He's going to be in the class. So if you were just looking forward here, we've got Brody Lennon. Bodpin Miller and Jake Cook kind of all sealed up this week. And like I said, Brody's legit. He's not just some throw in. I think he's really good. I really do. So always nice to get a hometown kid in again. Uh, three Ohio dudes. I absolutely love it. And there's more to come. So the dogs were all in attendance, man. The top dogs were in attendance for the big visit weekend. Sanchez, St. Clair, Naeem Offord. Uh, they all had a job to do, and their job was to have a lot of fun and lock down their class, and they've taken ownership of that class. The way these guys have embraced it, it's been awesome to see, and I got quite a few comments last week when I aired this. Now we're heading in to the big last official visit, right? This one's the juicy one. This is the one we've all been waiting for, and it is set up absolutely beautifully as coming in for their official visits will be Tavian St. Clair, Naeem Offord, and Devin Sanchez, the three most elite, most dialed in commits that we have in this class, the guys who have pulled most of this together, the ones who've done the majority of the peer recruiting, the ones who command respect because they are three of the top six players in the country and they are kind and humble guys and everybody loves them. They're special dudes. And to have those three on campus, they've been there dozens of times they're coming up to enjoy themselves they're going to be totally at ease the atmosphere is going to be fantastic because of them and not just them we've got more and we'll get to them but they're all so locked in all right so a couple people said to me i don't think you can really call naeem offered that locked in well i spoke to naeem's dad let me tell you something there's been some smoke with auburn He's been on Alabama's campus, we heard, four times in eight days. Um, Naeem Offord, I guarantee you, is not going anywhere near uh, Alabama or Auburn when it comes to a commitment. And he is 100% locked in. And if he does go somewhere, it is definitely not going to be Alabama or Auburn, for whatever that's worth. Um, I'm pretty certain of it. Uh, anyway. They were in there doing the darn thing. David Sanders Jr., obviously the, the whale of the class. And David Sanders Jr. was hosted by the Armstrongs twins on his visit. Now, David Sanders Jr., this picture was posted by uh, Deontay Armstrong. If you look at his right hand there, that is uh, the Vols sign. So you, you put up the two fingers there, and then you make the O. You see the O, and then the L, V-O-L. This was pointed out by a lot of Vols fans on Twitter, and I, I don't think it's deniable that that's what he's doing there. Uh, I don't know, guys. That doesn't look great, but by all reports, he had a fantastic visit. Most people think that the Buckeyes come out with the slight edge here. Um you never want to come out of an official visit with a slight edge. You want to come out with a good edge, but you got a slight edge and you were the last visit. Now, when that calms down, does that mean you're back on a level playing field after 48 hours? 
Who knows? But things went fairly well, it seems. Uh, where it didn't go too well was Jordan Davison. Jordan Davison, we talked uh, the day before, I think it was Friday, that I had read something that basically indicated in a roundabout way that there was a money situation that had popped up. And everything I've seen coming out of this confirms that there is a money situation between Jordan Davison and the Buckeyes side of things. And uh, not been resolved. And apparently the Buckeyes are okay if he doesn't end up in this class. If he doesn't want to be there, he's not going to be there. He also weighed in at 240 pounds. He probably plays at about 215 to 220. So walking around at 240, uh, something that is kind of a turnoff. You never want to see somebody let themselves, you know, put on that kind of weight when they're 18 and, and they're an athlete. Um, Isaiah West, I don't think would ever do that. I don't think Bo would ever do that. Look, I'm just kidding. But obviously, you know that I know a lot of you guys really, really love this dude and really want him in the class. Um, certainly not looking like that at this point. And Coach Locke appears to have the attitude that if he doesn't want to be with them, he's not going to be with them. So I don't think they're going to bend over backwards to meet his demands, whatever they seem to be. What are the other options on the board? I don't know, man. We talked earlier last week about Shakai Mills Knight canceling his visit. Byron Lewis, the Buckeyes, canceled his visit. Uh, he's going to be committed somewhere else soon. You got Anthony Turbo Rogers, the Alabama commit on the board. Alabama, I don't think there's any way he gets out of that class. They're absolutely killing it and have now moved up into the number two class, having beaten Justin Fry and the Buckeyes out for Micah DeBose from Cleveland for Jackson Lloyd. They got another five star, just got crystal ball to them, another tackle on the offensive line. Their quarterback that they flipped from SMU just won the Elite 11. They're absolutely on fire. I cannot believe this. I did not see this coming, but credit where it's due, they're absolutely smashing it. Kalen DeBoer and his rookie staff are smashing it. And uh, to think that we're going to pull Turbo Rogers out of there to join a three man class is pie in the sky. It really is. Um, I would be stunned. So, where we're at at running back, we'll have to keep a close look on it. I don't know. Dorian Brew. Uh, Dorian Brew comes out of this visit. Everything's looking fantastic. Dorian is now down kind of between the Bucks and, and USC. And going against USC, where a defensive player, when they've just lost their two biggest defensive commits, it doesn't sound good for SC, though he does really seem to like it out there. That's going to be a really tough sell. So, I still think Dorian ends up in the class, and I think he's probably going to uh, call this one soon. I really hope so anyway. But I just have a real hard time believing he would commit to USC with uh, them trying to do the defensive rebuild. They got that flood of commits, and it seems like it's all fading away as their two biggest ones leave the class. And now Juju Lewis, their quarterback who went and visited Colorado, is now uh, – it's after his visit at Colorado, which apparently went very well, um, I was listening to his show today, and uh, they got USC running a third. Now, they had, listen, the same thing they said about the two defensive guys, that, that Justice Terry and Elijah, um, that, that just flipped out of there. They were saying the same thing, that uh, USC was, was behind, even though they were committed there, um, at least with Elijah Griffin for sure. Well, Juju Lewis is uh, a lot of smoke with Auburn. And uh, this Colorado thing is apparently legit. So, you know, is this guy going to flip out of USC? This would be absolutely hysterical. USC was bragging so much when they got the three of those guys out of Georgia that they were making graphics. I remember one I put on the show. It was, uh, it, it was like a grocery store, and the grocery store said Georgia on it, and they were going shopping at the Georgia store. And uh, they're about to lose all three of them, which is utterly hysterical. Um, we cannot let them get Dorian Brew, and I don't think they will, but I think Brew's all ours, so that's great. Um, another fantastic piece of news, Ziggy Grady, huge movement in him as we got a crystal ball from Steve Wilfong for Zion Grady. Uh, he had great things to say about LJ, about his family being engaged during the visit, uh, questions answered, loved hanging out with the guys in the class, sounded like things were fantastic for the Alabama edge rusher who the Buckeyes need in the class, man. 
we need another edge in this class, and we still don't know Zaheer Mathis' status. He was on Penn State at Penn State this weekend on an official visit. And again, a guy we haven't heard much from, we don't know much about. Uh, one of the quietest members of this class, which is fine. A lot of times that means that a lot of times that's great, not hearing anything from somebody. Um, but what are they going to do in the middle of the class? Well, Malik Autry would be the ideal guy. How are things going with Malik? It sounded like the visit went good, but Malik is an Auburn commit. And most people think it's going to take a whole lot to get him to flip out of that. I don't know, man. You never know. Florida's another contender for that. Two schools that might play very bad in the beginning of the season. And if that's the case, does it make it more reasonable to think he might flip out of there? If Ziggy Grady ends up committing to the Buckeyes, does it make me make it more likely? I think so. Then you got Naeem Offord and you got Ziggy, two Alabama guys. Uh, Ziggy's a good friend of his. But what do the Buckeyes do when they're waiting for these for this guy and waiting for Joaquin Stewart to reclassify? These are two massive gets that they want in the middle. What do they do in the meantime? Well, you got Trajan Odom, who they're also in on. Trajan Odom, they're going up against USC and Oregon, which means he's probably going to cost a lot of money. And then you got Darquez. Uh, what the hell is his last name? Darquez. Oh, I, Darquez. You got Darquez too. Darquez out of Florida. Um, probably going to be a less expensive prospect. Um, is he just as good as Trajan Odom? I don't think so, but some people have said that they think they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, that's not what I get out of it, but if the staff feels that way, that's all that matters. And, uh, I think that they're probably going to end up taking this guy, man. One of those two, you can't just go in waiting on Malik Autry or Jakeem Stewart to be in this class down to the end and then get caught with your pants down. You got to add a big man in the middle, and uh, I think they're probably going to add Odom or Darquez, who I can't remember his last name. Um, we've not watched his film yet. We'll watch some more of that Monday. We'll watch him. We'll watch some Brody Lennon, and uh, who else do we got to see? Um, oh, listen, we got some big news on the wide receiver front. So Preston Bowman committed to Kentucky and then got offered by Ohio State the very next day. Preston Bowman from Pick North, whose mom works at Ohio State. He's a wide receiver. Um, let me pull his card up here. Six foot 190. He's a three star, nationally ranked 1,242. You can see on three doesn't even have them in, his, in their uh, internal rankings, nor does ESPN. Now, why did he get offered? He went to camp two and a half weeks ago, absolutely lit it up, dominated the camp. Everything coming out of that camp was he killed it. And I mistakenly, uh, apparently misread or something that I thought he had an offer, um, which I made in my offer report that he did get an offer. And it confused me. I was like, what, what, is, what, what are the contingencies based on this offer? Because for sure, if he got this offer, he'd come in on the spot. Um, so obviously I was mistaken. I apologize for that. Um, he was not on that list of guys that got an offer, but he got his offer now. So where does that leave our wide receiver room? And what does that tell us? Well, I mean, this could help with, uh, with, if this is any indication as to what's going on here. Womp. He, he loves the orange and the blue. I do think they will be tough to beat uh, in the end. I wouldn't say Miami's completely out, but they're fading some. Ohio State, I think, is out. I think in the end, he does. That's Chad Simmons of on three. Normally, you don't hear somebody like that say, I think so-and-so is out, unless something has come up that's made him really think that. Um, you know, usually they say this guy's favor, this guy's fading, but to straight up say Ohio state's out, that surprised me. Um, but offering Preston Bowman, you got to assume Preston Bowman, who's from Pickerington, whose mom works at Ohio state, who's committed to Kentucky is going to want to be in this class at Ohio state. He came to camp, he showed out, uh, he clearly wants it. He got an offer from Brian Hartline to play at Ohio State. So assuming Preston Bowman takes that offer, commits to Ohio State, you're now looking at Des Jones, Quincy Porter, Preston Bowman, and BP Miller. You got four guys in the class. Now we thought all along with B 
BP Miller, because he's such a project guy, that that meant they were probably going to take five. So we got to think here, they're probably going to stand pat with these four right here and leave a spot open to try to land one of the whales um, in the end, right? You got to think so, or they're perfectly content with these four and not even, you know, if, if it comes, it comes. But this could be a money thing too. You paid for JJ last year. You're going to pay for Chris Henry this year. DeCorey and Moore, while nice. Jamie French, while nice. Neither of them are either of those guys. Uh, JJ, Chris Henry Jr., um, DeCorey and Moore kind of stands head and shoulders above the rest in this class right here. And he doesn't come close to the talent that JJ or Chris Henry Jr. are. Not close. Um, big gap between those two and him. And then another gap between him and the Jamie French, Vernell Brown categories of the world. So if there is a class that you're going to save the money, and work with some in-state guys that you feel have a ton of potential, this would be the one. It all kind of makes sense. Um, but, you know, I don't know, man. Um, definitely uh, de definitely sounds like this class is going to have those four guys in it. It's just a question of will they be able to get another? You know, are they going to pay for another? Or are they just like, look, we want you. Um, but, you know, if you want to come, we're not going to be matching Texas uh, for Jamie French. We're not going to be matching Texas or Oregon for DeCorean Moore. Because at this point with DeCorean Moore, I mean, I think that that ship has totally sailed. Texas is going to pay a ton of money to keep him in state. And if this th with this indication right here, it makes me think the Buckeyes are not willing to go all into the mattresses on DeCorean Moore when it comes to money. Um, they need that money for David Sanders. They want that money for Malik Autry. Obviously, Jakeem Stewart is going to come with a hefty price tag. You're trying to get him out of LSU. These are the guys you're going to go to the wall for when it comes to the checkbook. Uh, so I don't know, man. I think this might be the class. I think this might be the four-man wide receiver crew right here. Anyway, that's my feel, guys. Tell me what you think. Um, that's speculation right there uh, on my part. There, I have no, no inside information on that particular part right there. Uh, all speculation, just trying to read the tea leaves here. But I, I think it's safe to assume that Preston Bowman is going to be in the class. Tyler Atkinson, uh, we talked about him uh, coming in for a surprise visit after we showed his film on Wednesday's show. Tyler Atkinson, fantastic linebacker out of Georgia. One of the best we've seen in years, really. Unbelievable first step. Nasty football player. I absolutely love him. You guys did too when I showed the film. Got a ton of comments. Um, this is where he's from. Loganville, Georgia. Um, as you can see, going to be a tough one right there. Going to be a tough one for sure. Tyler Atkinson, 6'2", 205. Top 10 overall prospect. The number one linebacker in the class of 2026. Absolute stud. Um Laurenitis and Coach Walton are in on his recruitment. Coach Walton has known me for a long time and continues to put me on game about ball and life. Uh, Ryan Day also involved. He said Coach Day spent a lot of time with me as well. He showed me a lot about Ohio State and what they have to offer. It was really good getting back up there for another visit at Ohio State. That's his second time up. About Coach Laurenitis, he said we got a really strong relationship. I got to visit his tree in the Grove and learn some other history about a lot of Buckeye legends. I'll definitely be back there soon. I want to check out a game or two, especially when it's cold. I need to see what the, quote, it gets cold hype is all about. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, th that's a guy who's really very interested, right? He's already thinking about, all right, how cold are we talking here? Um, I like the sound of that. I like it a lot. And his skill set, it stands alone in 26. Just one of the most dynamic athletes you'll ever see at the position. Total impact football player. Big hurdle to climb for the Bucks with him being so close to uh, Athens. But uh, he certainly sounds to be interested indeed. All right, let's go through a couple of our pictures we got here. Des Jones posted this. I wish I could show you this with the music, but they won't let me. But just get a load of our dude here. I mean, first off, the swag, the confidence. Got his Buckeye hat on. The dude is so smooth. He's so quick in and out of bricks. Look at that. 
He is so quick in and out of breaks. His route running is precise. He's got unbelievable hands. He's great after the catch. You want to talk about slept on, man. If this dude was from Miami, might be pushing five-star status. Everything about him screams Miami kid, doesn't it? He just looks like one. He acts like one. Look at him. He's totally legit. Totally legit and an excellent find. And another one of these Jersey dudes that we basically didn't have to fight anybody for because they're so slept on. It's unbelievable. Um, ran across this picture here the other day. Jack looks amazing for one, right? But number two, what what is with the homemade workout sled here? Look at this. Th this looks like they made it in the shed out back. It's made of wood. It's treated lumber. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, linemen that we offered um, at camp recently posted this, and these are uh, all his uh, offers that he, or all the letters of correspondence he got in uh, in one week's time. And there was a whole other half to this left side um, that I just noticed the Citronauts. And I thought I would tell uh, tell you who the Citronauts were in case anybody didn't know, because I love that story. So the Citronauts are the Florida Tech Citronauts. And Florida Tech later changed their name to the University of Central Florida. Um, obviously, UCF no longer uh, the University of Central Florida Citronauts. They are the UCF Knights. But uh, sending out correspondence with Citronauts on it, I love it. They called themselves the Knots for short. Um, so I always, I always really like that one. Some pictures from the visits. There's our man, Ziggy Grady. We got BIA in the house. That's Sanchez in six, Dorian Brew in seven, offered in one. OG Walt right there in the middle, wearing his, uh, what, I don't know what you call that guy there. What do you call that thing on his head there? Here's Dorian Brew by himself. Uh, yo, quad alert, dude. Dorian Brew is a thick dude. Got our guy Jake Cook living the dream. How much do you think he loved getting to put that uniform on, dude? I feel so good for that kid. Another Dorian Brew. There's the big one, Malik Autry. Oh, yeah. Uh, LJ, man. It's still cool. He's a cool old dude right there. Tavian St. Clair. Birthday boy today. Happy birthday, St. Clair. Uh, pointing at the Heisman. Rocking the big hair. And there's our guy, David Sanders Jr. A lot of folks think he looks good in scarlet and gray. Tell me what you think. All right, let's get to a couple of comments and roll us on out of here. And we'll start here with Josh R. 2280. Looks like for Sully Brown to Floridia. Whatever happened between French and Ohio State really seems to have ruined wide receiver U. Couldn't agree more. Uh, absolute trash. Hey, Chuck, there was too much money on the Buckeyes. Vegas had a direct hotline to the replay booth. If one doesn't think so, they are naive and ignorant. Interesting perspective. Hadn't even thought of it. Uh, OSU record since 11-19-23. 0-2. Michigan record since 11-19-23. 4-0. That's factually correct. That really happened. I'm just curious. Uh, what was it that happened on 11 19 23 that made us start right there uh, in the history of college football? I thought that your history of college football started three years ago. Um, I, I didn't realize that it was actually 11 19 23. Uh, you learn something new every day. Uh, our buddy Jay, I agree with your take on Day. He's a good guy and a good coach. I was also livid at the end of last season and at the end of the rope with him. And then I blocked out all the noise. Made some serious changes operationally and to his staff before having one of the best off seasons of all time. I'm excited again and anxiously awaiting the season. Counterpoint, our buddy Lavelle. I thought without a doubt we had the better roster, 
but I've never been so disappointed in day. I'm stuck in that zone. I have to see him A plus coach in big games. I still don't think the cheaters have had the better roster the last three seasons. We've lost those games because of day, even the Missouri game day did not have the team ready. That born on third base comment seems to be ringing true. If we don't do it this year with this roster, not sure exactly what Lavelle means by it. Um, if he means beat Michigan, well, yeah, you know, I I can understand that for sure. Um, if it means win the national championship or just win a big game, you know, the, the thing is, I, I just have a hard time with, um, and I don't think Lavelle means this, but I have a hard time with some people say, if he doesn't win the national championship, okay, they're not even the favorites to win the national championship. To, so to act like that is a little bit like, okay, like I could see if you are like the overwhelming favorite to say, you better get it done this year, uh, win that national championship. But if he's talking about big games, you know, I, I can certainly see that. Um, I thought we had the better roster too. And uh, the Missouri game, you know, it is very evident that that he didn't coach to win that game. And uh, I'm with you. I think it's inexcusable. And I won't, you know, it, it's something I'm not going to forget. Uh, absolutely inexcusable to have guys like Kate Stover playing in that game when he was going to the draft and said he couldn't sleep at night if he sat out the game and then not coach to win the game. That very much makes me upset. Um, but I'm with you. Totally with you. And finally, I'm going to read this and have to upload it later um, because I did not upload it yet. But let me read this to you. I want to read this to you. This one made me smile. All your comments made me smile. And I do want to say, I have never got more complimentary comments than uh, this Sunday's episode of Juck on Bucks, which was an hour and 41 minutes. I'm glad you guys appreciated it. I worked really hard on it. Um, this is from Steven Richardson. This is the grandfather that texted before. All right. So the other day I uh, on the Sunday show, I said that I had to take out a whole section and redo it when I was talking about the targeting uh, on the Georgia game because uh, I had, my mouth was dirty. It gotten away from me. And uh, I said that I had to redo it because there was a grandfather who, who uh, messaged me and said he likes to watch with his granddaughter um, to please not swear. And I felt bad. So this is him, Stephen Richardson. This is the grandfather that texted before, so he stayed with me. I appreciate that, Steve. Um, I do appreciate your professionalism and spirit. I listen many times with Laylee, my six-year-old granddaughter who is a fan, to every show. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, Steve. That really made my day. Anyway, guys, that'll do me for today. Um, we'll do a longer episode uh, tomorrow, but I just wanted to come on and blurb out uh, my thoughts about, uh, you know, everything that, uh, that that I heard was going on from coming out of these visits. Um, again, uh, pretty good news about uh, most of the guys. Um, bad news about Vernell Brown. Bad news about Jordan Davison. Great news for uh, Preston Bowman. And uh, a crystal ball for Ziggy Grady. So we'll see where we go. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Joking Bucks out.